Well, hey y'all, welcome back. Uh, I'm out here on a trail and I am in Lincoln, Nebraska right now. I got some history to show you guys. Um, I'm at a park in Lincoln called Pioneers Park. And right here in front of me are four, I believe it's four, I might be wrong, are massive columns, like what you would see in ancient architecture. Uh, but they have some really cool history. Yeah, they're right here in front of me in a park in the middle of Nebraska. Look at this. Some of them are even on the ground there. Yeah, there's four of them. And it looks like this may have toppled off of one of these, or maybe both of these. Ooh, and there's a giant sign. Uh, but yes, look at this. These things are massive absolutely massive and yeah these must have fallen off of these two somehow yeah just massive columns here it's hard to even grasp the size of it i don't know how tall they are uh, but they're huge so i guess to give you a little bit of history off my phone uh, as i stand here kind of shivering i should have put a coat on but they arrived here in 1916 as the result of a long forgotten political maneuvering. Uh, so back before that in 1908, when the treasury department building in Washington DC was undergoing renovations, 30 of these were taken out and replaced with pillars of granite. These are from sandstone, which is porous and not as strong. 30 of the old sandstone columns were painstakingly detached from the building in the summer of 1908 and set aside for some further use. Uh, but nobody really knew what to do with them. And uh, eventually, these four were sent here. In 1916, Commissioner of the District Excise Board, Cotter T. Bride, paid to have four of the columns shipped to Lincoln in honor of Nebraska politician William Jennings Bryan. The other 26 had a terrible fate. In 1918, they were blown up without warning by George A. Fuller Construction Company to clear a building site near the present day National Academy of Sciences building. So yeah, really cool history here. Uh, and you would never know it. I was actually, uh, had just stopped at All Dogs Off Road to pick up my, my Christmas gift from them because I'm an All Dogs member. We'll get to that when we get to camp. Uh, but I was talking to those guys. They had no idea these were from uh, a building in Washington, D.C. So you never know what history you're going to run across in your own neighborhood, so to speak. Uh, yeah, really cool. Let's check out what this sign has. I don't think you guys are going to be able to read this. So I'll read this to you quick. And this says Antelope Park because they used to be at a different park called Antelope Park, which is now... Uh, no longer there from my understanding. Um, it says Antelope Park, 1916. The four sandstone columns in this park entrance were quarried in Virginia and used in the construction of the Federal Treasury Building at Washington, D.C. on a site selected by President Jackson in 1836. Between these columns, President Lincoln stood to review the troops during the Civil War. Uh, when in 1907 the Treasury Building was remodeled, these drum columns were purchased by Cotter T. Bride of Washington, D.C. and in 1916 presented to the city of Lincoln. Uh, and this sign here, this big metal sign, it's cast from metal recovered from the Battleship Maine, presented by W.M. Lewis, Camp No. 2, Department of Nebraska, USWV. Yeah. It's wild. It's a wild little bit of history. And to think that uh, old Abraham Lincoln may have touched these things uh, while he was talking to troops during the Civil War is even crazier. Like, to, to think uh, of the people that walked through these, the people that touched these, uh, and the fact that these were, these were part of the federal buildings in Washington, D.C. is kind of just wild to me. And they're huge. Like, it's hard to even get it all in the shot. There are a couple more bits laying here on the ground. And there's one way over there. It looks like it's been rolled over there. But, yeah, these are, like, halfway buried. Just massive. You can see they. it looks like they've tried to do a little bit of a touch-up, maybe. Because, yeah, it's, like, busted down here. But get down here and give you one big shot of these. Really cool stuff, guys. 
the scroll work up on the top. Cool history, y'all. And, you know, I've said it before and I'll say it again. There's history everywhere. You just got to look for it. Everything has got a story. Anything that's old has got a story. Yeah. It's like little egg shapes on here. All right, I'm gonna get hiked way back up to the truck there and uh, we'll try to find ourselves somewhere to camp tonight. All right, we've made it to a spot. I have been to this campground before once. It's not a bad spot. And of course, given the time of year, there's nobody else here. I do have electricity over here, which is nice for tonight. Uh, I'm gonna grab a beer out of here and we're gonna get that fire raging real quick. And we'll crack this guy open. this that's my prison from all dogs I did remember to refill my wood this time but I did not grab new fire starters I don't have a, I think I only got one in here not even an actual fire starter but we'll get her done Well, I think that'll get going here pretty easily. Uh, I should probably grab a jacket. It's actually kind of chilly out here. It's like 43 degrees right now. Uh, and the sun is dropping fast. But picked up this beer. I have never heard of this before. But this is Acres Ale. A-K-R-S. And uh, this is, says authentic American beer. But the coolest part. Brewed with Nebraska corn. So... I don't know who makes this. Oh, brewed and canned by Zipline Brewing. So I've had plenty of Zipline beers. Uh, yeah. Once I saw that this was brewed with Nebraska corn, I was like, I gotta try that. It's probably just gonna be like a light beer. Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. No, uh, I gotta grab a jacket. So this thing, y'all, uh, I am, uh, if you guys watch the video, man, you guys can't see me with that sun. It's pretty bad, huh? Try this over, over yonder. All right. So this is from All Dogs Off Road, uh, and it's a Kelty low love seat. So I'm a member of the All Dogs Off Road co-op. And, uh, since I'm a member, they do a yearly Christmas gift for the members. And, uh, I went and picked this up today from the shop. Ooh, there's a handle on the back, just so they didn't have to pay for shipping, etc. cetera. Uh, but we'll check this out. I imagine it sets up just like a bag chair, but I guess I'd, oh, that's like a cover? Is that just a wrap on the outside? That's a wrap instead of a bag. Toss that in the truck so I don't get it all dirty. 
think it just unfolds just like a regular chair, but it's double wide. Bam, look at that. Oh, it's set down over here. Yeah, that is low. Huh. Yeah. That's nice, dude. That's real nice. It's got like cup holder in the pocket there. And on the inside it says it's it's printed with something that says need a refill. Dude, that's really nice. That is real nice. Now I imagine maybe they picked these out so that you could have your dog with you chilling on the chair. Uh, seems like it would be a perfect spot for a pup. But uh, I ain't got one of those yet. However, this is nice. It's real nice. Grab my cerveza. <laughs> Chilling my chair, watch my fire that you guys can't see up there, but cheers guys. We're gonna let this fire burn for a while and I need it to burn down to some decent coals because I'm gonna try to cook something on there tonight and it might turn out good, but it might get burnt. We'll see what happens. And, uh, and of course it's nice and spicy, so. Cheers, y'all. All right, y'all, it's, uh, it's getting cold out here. I had to put my hat on and grab my coat. I put over the old uh, truck stop jacket and we've got dinner here. So I remembered paper towels this time. Uh, but what we have here is a Hy-Vee take and bake pizza. I actually had to have one prepared for me because they don't have any of these on the shelf. Uh, as you guys can see, there's some jalops on there, but uh, it's also got spicy sauce on it and um, a bunch of red peppers and stuff in the sauce, I guess. Where's my phone at? I actually took a picture of what the ingredients were on the phone because it doesn't say it on there. So this is known as the Spicy Devil. It has spicy red sauce, mozzarella, pepperoni, Italian sausage, jalapenos, and crushed red peppers on it. Uh, I'm going to attempt to do this on the campfire. Uh, so we're going to see how this goes. I might end up burning the crap out of this thing. And then we've got a nice topping to try on there that... I'm actually really excited to do so let's get this grate flipped over and see what we can do with this all right so i actually asked the guy for a personal pan and he must not have heard me correctly and he made this one and and i didn't see him make it so uh, i really hope i don't screw this whole pizza up but we'll see And of course it's probably not going to be wide enough so I'll have to like double side it somehow. Yeah. Oh. Stay here. I need you. Oh, I need you. Don't go away. It's a little breezy. Might have been smart to do double layer. I don't know what I'm doing though. Well, good enough. Crash, no. Saved it. Let's hope I don't screw this up. I'm gonna be bummed if I do. And I really don't know how I'm gonna do this thing. 
tent the top of it. Stop blowing away, dang. Hold this edge over a couple times, hopefully lock them together. Like so. And this is just gonna blow away in the wind, but. We'll just do that. It's not completely closed, but it should, in theory, hold some of that heat in there. And uh, where's my phone at? I'm gonna set an alarm for 10 minutes and check it. But fingers crossed this, this turns out all right, guys. I think while that's cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and get my heater set up and turned on in the truck. I always lose my sunlight this time of year. Got juice. I like to run this behind the behind here so I don't have to see that green light all night. Yeah, that's gonna be nice tonight. No propane this evening. All right, y'all. It's had about double the time it's supposed to. I mean, it's all melty. crispy on the bottom. I think that's done. Got a little grease out here from the pepperonis. Cool. We're going to take this into the truck because it's cold and it's dark out and it's warm and light in there. Let's see if I can get it into this cardboard box without burning it or myself. Maybe I can just slide the pizza itself off. Boom. I almost lost it. Almost lost it. Get in there. All right. Had to grab my light that wasn't doing much out there. And my camera. Oh, it smells good. I can smell it now. shoes off okay and get some of this off can't wear this much clothes in here because it's warm the heater is blasting feels nice Definitely need some airflow though. Bada bing, bada boom. Should have grabbed my hat. My other hat, because I don't need that one. 
need to trim my hair again. So, all my gray hair isn't showing. Every time it grows out, it's like, man, I've come to the realization that I'm getting old and I have a ton of gray hair coming in. Uh, but to be honest with you, if, it, if I went completely gray within the next couple of years, I would not be bummed about it at all. I think it'd be kind of cool to have the gray hair. But here we are. Ooh, that's a little cold wind coming in that direction. Now, problem number two is I did not bring a pizza cutter. So the only thing I have, I've got my pocket knife and I guess I've got this big dong here. This one might be easier to use. So uh, yeah, we've got the spicy pizza, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna try some of this uh, red, 100% raw hot honey. This was sent in by Ginny uh, on my last live stream. And I did taste it, it tastes really good. Um, but what, is the, what does it say here? Inspired by the South and made for everybody. Red clay hot sauce. Red clay hot sauces and hot honeys are expertly crafted by an acclaimed Southern chef using only the purest ingredients. 100% pure, raw, and delicious. Sweet with a hint of heat, sustainably sourced in the US. Put it on pizza, roasted veggies, cheese plates, and fried chicken. So, number one thing it said to do was try it on pizza. And that's kind of what I saw uh, on some Google searches. So, am I just like snotting all over the place in here? It was cold out there. So that's what we're gonna try. But let's see if we can get some of this cut up because I know I'm not gonna eat this whole thing. And the crust might be a little bit doughy still, but it's crispy on the bottom. So I need to cut this into pieces so I can put it in plastic bag and put it in the cooler. Yeah, it's definitely crusty on the bottom. Um, I'm just thankful that I didn't completely burn it and ruin it. I'll show you guys the bottom of the crust here a little bit better. Here we go. Stoked on this, guys. This smells amazing. Looks amazing. And we'll see if I can show you the bottom of the crust there without spilling everything. It's got a... Oop, I'm spilling a little bit. It's It got crispy, that's for sure. It got crispy. It's hot. I think I think this is all cooked up just fine. The crust isn't super brown or crispy on the edges, but you don't have any heat coming from the top. It was really hard to kind of keep that heat in, but I don't know. I think the last time I just pulled the lid off of this thing. And that was the easiest way to do it, but let's see if we can get it off there. There we go. Yeah, hot honey, man. I really, I'd, I'd never heard of this stuff until it was sent in. Was there a cover on it? Yep. There we go. Kind of crystallized up here. I had it in my cooler. It's good though. It's definitely got a little bit of a kick to it, but. We'll grab ourselves a slice here and we'll just drizzle some on there. Maybe I should have warmed this up on the heater a little bit so that, I don't know if you can tell like all the sugar has gone to the top right there. You can't really shake honey very well. Yeah, it's not going to work. Let's just get ourselves some honey on there maybe. Oh yeah, look at that. All right, I'm excited for this one. Nothing fancy, take a big pizza, but if it's tasty, it's tasty, and you can do it over a campfire. So, there we go. You can taste it, it's got that like sweet, sweet flavor to it, because it's honey, obviously, but it's good on there. The red sauce is not as spicy as I expected, but.
That's good. It's cooked just fine. It's cooked just fine. Maybe if I would have maybe sprayed some Pam on the edges of the crust or if I had some butter or oil to put on the edge of the crust, that would have helped a little bit. And I also have in here with all my junk somewhere, there we go. I got some more crushed red peppers in the little packets that you can get from the from the pizza place at Hy-Vee and some Parmesan cheese. So we'll try that on the next slice. We'll we'll put a bunch of red peppers on there. This is like it's spicy. It's got some heat to it, uh, but it's not overly spicy by any means. And I don't know if it's all the honey. I don't think it's all the honey. Obviously, there's jalapenos on there. Okay, now I'm not mad that I didn't get the personal pan like I asked for. I will definitely be eating this for lunch tomorrow. I am sweating a little bit. Uh, I'm going to turn this heater down. That'll probably kick off here in a second. It's a little spicy, but that's really good. Yeah, the sweet from this honey is great. A little south for your mouth. Looks like they do have an Instagram red clay hot sauce, if you guys want to check them out. I don't know how many pieces of this I'm actually going to be able to eat right now. Had a fairly late lunch. Met my wife for lunch today. We went out for lunch. Because um, with our schedules and what I've got going on in the, the next few days, I probably won't see her for, gosh, I don't know. I probably won't see her for a good six days, maybe a little bit longer. All right, that's probably enough of the red peppers. Parmesan cheese up on there. And you gotta put some of the honey on there. I'm gonna maybe put a little bit more on it this time. Thick. Thick. Stoked on this one. And those are fresh jalapenos too. Every bite of jalap is spicy. Mm. I never would have thought about putting honey on pizza. Spicy honey. Well, y'all, I'm gonna slam probably a couple more pieces of this one or two maybe get the rest of this thrown in the cooler and uh find something on the tube to watch i didn't download any new movies so i don't really even remember what i have on there at this point hopefully i didn't have a bunch of them expire or anything but yeah let me eat a couple more slices get this cleaned up and hang out and watch a movie you should try this though that's good. All right, y'all. All cleaned up. Changed into my pajamas. Get myself a movie going. <laughs> All right. This is a movie that I've never heard of. It's called Screamers. And it is from what year? It's from 1996, so it's a bit older, and the description is very short. It says, a blade-wielding killing device evolves on its own to become a threat to anyone, including its creators. Uh, so we're going to give this a watch. It's funny that the this says it's from 1996, but if you scroll all the way down to look at their, uh, like the director and what they're known for, it says that this movie came out in 95, so who knows, but... We'll see what this is all about, if I can make it through this. It might be garbage. Oh. Dun, dun, dun. I don't take
takes place in the year 2078, I guess? I don't know. I didn't know that. <clears throat> Y'all, that was a weird movie. One of the weirder sci-fi flicks I've seen in a while. Like it, the beginning, I don't know, the things in the, in the beginning reminded me like of Tremors. Same time frame, I guess, for when these came out, I think. Had to be something close, but. Dude, that just got weirder and weirder. Uh. But it was a good movie, like, I feel the production quality was high on it for the time frame also. Like, I don't know. It was a decent flick. I would recommend that for sure. Screamers. I'm surprised I've never heard of it, but. Oh, I think it's time to go to bed. Whoa. <sighs> Plenty of juice on that. Yeah, we're just gonna have to turn this down. Set 65. It gets way colder in here though. Like it doesn't turn off. Definitely doesn't turn on at 65 degrees, but I can uh, I can turn it up a little higher if I get cold later. But I don't think that's gonna be a problem even with the windows open. Uh, it's gotta be below 20. I guess I never gave you guys a weather report for today. It was fairly warm earlier. It's 28 degrees, feels like 21. The low tonight is 20, so next week it's supposed to be 51 degrees. And then the day after it's supposed to snow. Weird Nebraska weather. Come on, Nebraska. Gotta get it together. Give me that blizzard. All right. Good night, y'all. I gotta turn this light off. Good morning. bad in here but I do did leave the windows open all night y'all my bad there you go 25 degrees outside right now feels like 16 not bad in here though I didn't put my thermometer up on the on the truck yet haven't bought haven't picked up a digital one yet but I'm gonna get one of those here pretty soon Looks like the sun's gonna come up over there. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I don't think I got a coffee cup with me. coffee cup that's a bummer yeah I don't know bummer I forgot my coffee cup dummy oh yeah I might need my keys should turn the lights off. There we go. Dummy. Oop, I'm gonna lose my phone out of my pocket. Well, good morning. Is that the sun over, oh, you guys can't, well, maybe over there. You guys can't see that at all. Uh, it's nice out here. Not bad at all. Not bad.
Now it's just annoying me. Find the old caffeine wizard, coffee wizard. I've never tent camped here, but you can get right by the lake. You can't park a truck by the lake, though. Not as close as these are. Ooh, speed bump. I get a number three uh, with a coffee, and that'll be it. Okay, you're going to check Monty 641 at the first window. All right, thank you. Why are you running? All right, y'all. Got some Mickey D's for breakfast. And a cup of coffee. Bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit. I haven't had a McDonald's breakfast in quite a while. Yeah, look at that. You know what? I bet that hot honey would be good on this. Yeah. Had a great time last night. The the pillars in Lincoln are cool at Pioneers Park. If you ever get the chance to go see those, I mean, it's just something like, I don't know, the history behind it makes it really cool in my opinion. And there's a lot of people that are local that probably have no idea. A couple that I talked to yesterday, the couple guys I talked to yesterday at All Dogs Off Road, they knew the pillars were there, but they had no idea what they were from, so... It's cool. I love, I love the just little history things like that that you can run across when you're out adventuring. And just like that one proves that you don't have to travel halfway across the country in order to see something like that. But you can see it in your own backyard. No matter where you're at, there's cool stuff like that to be found. Anyways, y'all, I think I'm going to go ahead and close this one out here. Uh, headed out on a little road trip for the next couple of videos, so stay tuned for that. It should be a good one. And, uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Appreciate you guys watching, talking with my mouth full, and, uh, yeah, stay tuned for the next adventure. I'll see you in a bit. Nah, uh -huh.